From the danger of toxins, we now head to the danger of linguistics. Changes in official language can spark bitter feuds, but our language columnist, Johnson, never shies away from conflict. Writing in the pages of our Books and Arts section this week, he wrote a column in praise of the singular they. At a recent meeting of the American Copy Editors Society, the Chicago Manual of Style and the Associated Press, or AP Stylebook, both widely followed, announced a change that sent waves through the audience. Oh, dear listener, brace yourself, sit down, be careful, it's coming, you know it's coming, you didn't want to hear it, but you're hearing about it first here. In AP's wording, they stroke them stroke there is acceptable in limited cases as a singular and or gender neutral pronoun when alternative wording is overly awkward or clumsy. Right now, in Ridgewood, New Jersey, there is a high school grammar teacher who has just experienced a heart attack and died. To understand the controversy, perhaps a little background is needed. English lacks an uncontroversial pronoun that lets you talk about a person of a generic or unknown gender, known as an epicene pronoun, from the Greek for common to all genders. For example, some would say that each president chooses his own cabinet is epicene, but psychological research proves that the his calls to mind a man. If you truly believe his is gender neutral, try Steve, Sally, Mary and Jane each had his hair cut today. So the controversial solution proposed by the Associated Press, Chicago Manual of Style, and The Economist in a forthcoming edition of our Style Guide. Each president chooses their own cabinet. Are you sure we're going to do that as well? Yeah. Oh, my holy shit. Some people say it is illogical. Each president is singular, and their is clearly plural. Efforts to use their instead of his are modern political correctness running roughshod over grammatical good sense. But the alternatives are far worse, explained Johnson. He or she quickly becomes wearisome on repetition. Alternating he and she is distracting. Inventing pronouns does not help. From Hirsch to Z, made-up gender-neutral pronouns have never taken off and probably never will. Hirsch is probably right. Or Z, for that matter. But sadly, that's the end of this week's Tasting Menu. You can read all of the articles mentioned in this week's issue, along with many more, and find our other podcasts on our website. Feedback about our audio content should be sent by email to radio at economist.com. And if you enjoy the program and enjoy the content, consider taking out a subscription. In London, this is The Economist.